so let's talk about process and our writers who are who are. They should be What's writing. Your they, they should, should be writing. Be I know. Exactly. Have, right. And there's porn. But you could be watching porn. You could be right doing now. other things. So the first thing we want to really say to you is, your time. is cut this off and start writing. Why do you right. know? You, right. You've clicked on this, but you should be on page 47 of your screenplay. So stop. Terry's right going to figure out that block for you right no, now. No, listen, my like, process <laughs> is very easy to explain. Do you, do you, you, is you it? all seen the film um, Justice for All, you know, the Al Pacino movie? You see that? There's a judge in it who, um, his way of getting his kicks was to get into a helicopter and fly it out to sea. And when the helicopter, when the, the fuel gauge in the helicopter got below half, he'd turn around and fly back. That's how I write. When, when, when it gets to the point where, I mean, I'll sit and look at it and, you know, think and blah, 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 and go on the internet and decide I'm doing research and end up reading about, you know, fucking Nicky Fink and <laughs> Manchester United and blah, blah. But then when I think that I'm not going to make the deadline, then I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and start. And that line gets finer and finer all the time. I, I, I find it painful. You know, to, to get to the story, you do have to, you've got to reach into yourself because you've, you've got this thing in your head that it's not good enough and it's not good enough and then you think it's good enough and you get up the next day and it's not still not good enough and, you know, the self-doubt and all that. It's a painful process. I don't like it. So process, please. You know, I'd rather be directing any day of the week than writing the script. But I think that aside from the, the pain of it all, you know, I do the classic, like, the post-its up there and sit and stir and try and figure out, first of all, what is this about? You know, the biblical thing. Jesus Christ was born and died on the cross for us. There you go, the New Testament in three sentences or two sentences. What's this about, you know? So I get an anthem, like, like Tony says, something about the character, like born thinks he's a good guy and wakens up and discovers he's bad. You know, Giuseppe Conlon goes into the belly of the beast. In the name of the Father, it's just Pinocchio. You know? Giuseppe Conlon goes into the belly of the beast to save his wooden son. He rescues him and dies in the process. What's the story about? And then is, are you telling the story? And is each scene saying something specific that leads to uh, the telling of that story, even if it doesn't have anything to do with it intrinsically, is there something there that takes the audience along a path? So I'm, I mean, I'm very into the three-act structure, and this has to happen, and, and the storytelling overtakes everything. In terms of process, though, he's sort of sliding over, because um, we're both... We've both written just so many scenes. I mean, you just sit down, and I was—I knew I was coming here tonight. I'm in the—I'm four days away from, well, four days, four or five days away from finishing a first draft original on a on a movie. So I'm like, I've been crazed for a while, and I'm sitting there, and you just sit thinking, how many scenes have you written, and how many ways do you do it, and 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 um, what is it? It's January, so the movie I'm on now. Um, I sort of dipped my toe into it back in the spring and sort of did a couple little proposals about ideas and it got better than I thought. And I literally had a day in July, a morning at my parents' house, sort of had the, the big idea and it was a good sexy idea and they would have been happy with it, but it wasn't a movie. Uh, and I got the character and in 45 minutes, the movie dropped. I mean, that's the movie, right then, right? So that's like a morning in July and I, and because I'm old and savvy enough at this point, I literally could talk to the person who was paying me two days later and say, look, you know, you know, you know how much whining I do and how, how depressed I am most of the time about what I'm doing and what a downer I am about how discouraged I am about what I'm doing. I'm telling you right now, this movie dropped. This is it. Um, <laughs> there's nothing here now but effort. Right. Now, I'm just finishing now. There's three months to make the deal, but I've been on this since October, and it's been a it's huge amount, but it's been effort. It's been nothing but effort. It's just hard work to make it work, but the movie dropped because I love that term, the anthem. I've never, it is. It's an anthem. You need the anthem mm -hmm. for the movie. And it was like, oh, here it is. It's fresh. It's fundamental. It, it, 
the, the three people that matter, their behavior, what they want, and the conf, you know, how complicated it is for them is going to work. I see where the end is. It's like, holy shit, everything else is, is you know, it's, it's, it's a, and in terms of process, I mean, it's just, I mean, we both now know the, well, you know the seek. I mean, directing is, it's just easy right. compared to this. It's right. just flat out. But the, the, write, the writing side of it that we're here for. There's so this, many things, though. There's mm. so many millions of things. No, there that is, you, yeah. little, little games that you play with yourself and little ways <laughs> that you ramp yourself up. And when you're writing, when you're in, you're like, it's horrible to be that in tune with your mood. You know, you're just surfing your mood all the time. And oh, I'm, Jesus, I'm in awe here because I'm waking up every morning like, what the fuck am I going to write here today? No, but you you're know, surfing for a good... I'm always... Yeah. When I was young, I wrote, I'm writing now yeah. before I go to work. I'm writing eight hours and I'm doing a thing. I'm like a clock, you know. And over time, I've graduated. Now I write. I mean, I'm, I'm still writing all the time now, but I'm really... What I'm there for is I'm really always waiting for the mood. I'm always waiting for a run. I'm always waiting for a feeling. I want to be here. I always want the feeling that I want to be there. And if I don't want to be at the desk, you know, maybe I'll move around until I want to really be there. Now, that makes the whole day be part of my work. Right. But, but, I but I want... But I how really many go now for yeah, runs. Could that go on for a month? Like, did you move around <laughs> no, like that? No. Yeah, well, man, I spent a whole year last year fishing around for, for nothing. Well, well then, how important, whether it's finding that in the morning or whether it's flying that helicopter out, uh, you know, just in, in, until it's half empty and coming mm -hmm. back. How important is that no matter what the stakes are, uh, whether you're getting paid, not getting paid, whether this is your dream come true or not, how important is that just to be in that moment to want to be there, to want to say that whatever is beyond the screen, what's ever beyond the page, I want to be here right now wrestling with these words, wrestling with these scenes, trying to understand this character, making it work. I've said this before, I mean, a really, a good day of writing is better than anything. I mean, it's better than the best day of directing, like a great day of writing where you really break something open, where it's really like, oh my God, it's just, I got it, I nailed it, and you know what you're going to do to the next day, you know there's something waiting for you that's juicy in the morning that you're into and you want to be there and you go out and nobody else knows what you've, what you've got in your head and it's, that's a good feeling. See, Tony has the, what I call the Pete Hamill syndrome, I used to work oh, for man. Pete Hamill who, <laughs> and Pete would sit down at the typewriter and he'd light a cigarette, you know, and off he'd go. And you'd come back a week later and he has a fucking book written. I don't like, do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. How? The, the game side of it, it's funny because I, I mean, I have this notion now that really good, clever writing can be, is somewhat, has become an impediment to good films. Yeah, I mean, there's every variation on, you know, every time I think I've seen every single conceivable variation of what could go right and wrong, you see something else. But I do think also, if you look at the people who write great scripts, Bill Gold, like I read Bill Goldman's, he's a big buddy of Bill Goldman's, but I read his stuff all the time. If you read Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid or whatever, it's fucking magic. You know, and the way he describes, how he gets into the character and the moment and just rip them off. Read all these guys and rip them off because they're fantastic the way they, they write. You know, any of his scripts, you can read Bill Goldman's scripts and it's just perfection in script writing. Even the scripts that didn't turn into good movies are fantastically, the Clint Eastwood Bill's going to have to see this now. <laughs> I know, well, but, but the, no. Clint, the Clint Eastwood one, what was that? Absolute the old, Power? Yeah, read that. There. Just read it. And the whole, as you read it, the film just flows out in front of your vision. Well, he shows you the movie. I mean, yeah. he's telling you the movie. And I think that's a good thing to, to do. You know, we're all plagiarists. Jesus Christ, it's all about, you know. Mm -hmm. I think you also relearn things over time. There, there's things you find yourself specifically doing in scenes. You go, oh, my God, I, of course I need to do this. Or uh, I learned a long time ago that I really needed to outline the films. It wasn't just having the anthem, yeah. but I really needed to have... Um, uh, uh, in, in varying focus, I needed to have a, a very, very detailed blueprint of the film. And, and then originally I thought, oh, I need to have that because um, that, helps me, uh, that helps me 
you know, I won't make mistakes and I'll, I'll see where everything's going. And, but in, in reality, the real reason that I realized that I was doing that ultimately was that I, I have these different, it's almost like different lenses that I put on and I, and, di and, and, and I could never be loose in a script. I could never write in a screenplay format and be really loose in the way I wanted to be loose. Once I put a character's name in the middle of the page and started writing dialogue and everything, there was a, there was a, a visual aspect of the page and there was an anal thing that hit me that everything had to be perfect. And I realized that what I was using the outlines for was really a place to swing away. And these documents for me became incredibly important, massive quantities of dialogue. Sometimes the outlines are way longer than the scripts would ever be. But I was, uh, it was a place to be sloppy right. and get the whole movie, and a place to be really loose mm. and swing and make a mess. And really very much like making a cartoon of a painting, you know, or like you're gonna paint the ceiling, you know. I could sketch. I always think of it in terms of, oh, I'm sketching this scene, I'll sketch this. And but when it, so then, when I finally got, and so it's all different lenses all the time. It's always, uh, now I'm gonna really get specific and it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be crystal hard now. If it's not an absolute real mm -hmm. space to me, if the physical space isn't known, I'm lost. Now it's very easy to write scenes of, oh, two people in a hotel room, or two people in a car, or two people in this. There's a lot of scenes that you generically can go to, but, but, if, but if you're writing uh, an action sequence, or if you're writing something where people are moving, or it's a really uh, 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 um, a specific character-oriented place, I, I realize that my delay in attacking the scene, and my delay in getting into it, and all the procrastination that goes into it, is just this process of me building the set. And I'm in a part of the script where I have to build a whole bunch of and I'm like, why am I not flying through this? I know it's supposed to come next. Right. I have it in a I have it in a treatment. Everybody like I could I could tell it to you. Why can't I, you know, why can't I really get it to the final? Well, I can't get it there because I gotta go from I gotta be downstairs in the courtyard. I haven't built the courtyard. I gotta be in the I gotta be on the roof. I don't know that roof. Um, so how much research do you do of a lot. I can't write action anymore unless I go to the place. Really? Nah, I can't do it. I don't know how people do that. On Born, that's been the big, on Born, on the first Born, I, we wrote to Paris and, and, and all the places in Europe that I knew very, very well. When we went to do the second film, while the script was even in development, while we were, while we were, said, well, went to Berlin and Moscow, did a recce there, no director or anything, before the director was even hired, in December, uh, we took a trip to Jakarta, Saigon, and Manila, trying to pick one place, but visited all three, and wrote this final sequence of the film, you know, mentally, in all three places, and that's what I'm doing today. I'm, you know, so the places are real to me. Uh, I can't imagine doing it any other way. I could not write an action sequence of a place that I'd never been or that couldn't visualize. That's good. What, what are some rules that you could share? No, I mean, rules help. The, the, a problem, it's... it's Restrictions help, yeah. deadlines really help. Screenwriting is the biggest bunch of rules anywhere. We've got 125 pages, it's gotta be a lot of white, it's gotta move like a motherfucker, it's gotta like do all these things, it's gotta be, it's, I mean, there's nothing to it. I mean, all I do is get rid of stuff, you know? So it's, problems are great. You have two weeks to rewrite the script because we wanna take five characters and make it three. Oh, okay. There's a game. There's a there's yeah. a math on the, those kind of rules actually focus your attention. Money focuses your attention. Needing it, wanting it, seeing seeing it, that focuses your attention. Deadline. I'm sorry, but the script's got to be in. You know, those things help. Um, I don't know if I would write screenplays as an arbitrary exercise for my own personal enjoyment, um, but I do love writing them when they go well. I really do. But the spec script is is that our you know is that. It's not writing for enjoyment. Yeah, but then you're writing for you're still writing for an audience. You know that someone's going to read it. You you know there's people waiting to see it. Um, when you're young, you don't. You, nobody wants to read what you do. You know, right. nobody wants to read anything. You know, and it's such a thrill the first time when you're on like a doctoring job or something where people are just you got to go home and write it. You got to go back to the hotel and you got to turn in pages the following morning. People in a meeting, you're like, the first time that happened to me, I was like, wow, what a guess. I mean, it's like putting on a show. It's like, wow, they're gonna. <laughs> yeah, I want a show. I want to. Yeah. You know, you. I, that's a game, you know, the show-off game. I want, I want, I mean, I'm playing that with myself right now. I want to finish in four days. I really feel good. I want to show it now. Two weeks ago, I was like, oh, man, drag ass, you know. But now I'm, I want to show it. Anything that makes you sit there and do it and get through yeah. it. 